are your ways, great are your works. Great are classes, I'm going to read just one verse from Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1. And it's good to see everyone in the house of the Lord this morning. God is so good. And he is good all the time. That's right. All the time. All the time, God is good. That's right. Oh, hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1, it says, And when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He gave them power over unclean spirits to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Hallelujah. We still have that power today. Yeah. That's right. He's given us the power, the authority to come against these things. It is your day. It's our day for deliverance. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Put your Bibles down and let's just lift our hands and thank God one more time that we have this day. We have his power in our life. Thank you, Lord, for your anointing in this place this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your presence that we feel here today. Oh, hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you praise, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Almighty oh, God. Almighty oh, God, how I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. It's about my time to receive my blessing. It's my time to get my deliverance. It's my time to get my healing. Whatever you have need of this morning, you can lay claim to it. Whatever it is, it's my time. It's our time for revival. It's our time to see a soul saved. It is our time to see deliverances. It's our time. Oh, hallelujah. You know, the devil's had enough of his time yes. with people's lives. That's right. But it's our time to get a hold of the spirit and the anointing and the authority and the power of God right. to lay claim on some things. Right. We see that Jesus called 12 men. And guess what? They are no different than you and I this morning. You look at all 12 of them, they all had some imperfect way about them. There was something that if you was looking for 12 perfect individuals, you would wonder what Jesus was thinking when he called them. But when he called them, he called them because they were willing to stop what they were doing to follow him. When he saw the three gentlemen on the seashore mending their nets, he called them to come follow me, and they dropped their nets and went straight away after Jesus. When he passed by, a man who was sitting at the gate collecting taxes, Jesus said, Levi, come follow me. 
He didn't, Levi, or known as Matthew, did not say, just a minute, uh, I, I've got to get somebody to relieve me. So many times I meet Sister Sandra for a break. She said, wait, wait, wait a minute, I can't leave right now. I've got to get somebody to relieve me. I said, well, who's your relief? Well, uh, most likely it's going to be a manager, but I've got to let them know that they need to relieve me or send somebody to relieve me. But when Jesus walked by the tax table where Levi was sitting and he said, come follow me, immediately Matthew got up or Levi got up and followed after Jesus. On the calling of the twelve, every time Jesus was calling them, not one of them made an excuse of, well, I'll have to do it later. I just can't go right now. I've got, can't you see? I'm busy. But there was something when he, they were willing to be used. And God is wanting individuals today, if it's our time, for to loose someone from a need or deliverance, it's our time to be used. If we're willing to be used, listen to the call because Jesus is still calling. It's our time. It's my time for a blessing. I've got to get up this morning because it's my time because I need something from God. It's my time that I know a neighbor that's in need. This morning, we've got to be that earnest about saying, it's my time. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of being uh, uh, having to deal with everybody else's time. When I say everybody else's, I'm not talking about people. There are circumstances that I have to deal with. There are situations that I have to deal with. But uh, God, it's my time to loose myself from these situations and these circumstances because it's my time for a blessing. Amen. It's my time to move under the spoot to where the glory comes out. Right on. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah! Yes. We to have a move of God. And if we're going to have a move of God, it's going to be dependent upon me and you laboring together. Jesus didn't say prayer was easy. Neither did he say fasting was easy. But when you get into a place where you know and you want to claim healing, deliverance, a miracle, you've got to move into a place where where you, I don't care how hard or how difficult it's going to be. I've got to have this. Right. You know, people, when they want to finance something, they don't care what they have to do to finance it. Whether it's a piece of furniture, whether it's a house or an automobile. When they say, i got to have it, and they realize they're going to do anything to get it. Even if they have to fudge on some of their numbers to get it, they're going to get it. And then, of course, they have to deal with it later. <laughs> Sometimes we get what we ask for, and once we get it, we're really sorry we got it. Because it's not quite cracked up to be that what we thought it was going to be, or it wasn't quite like the manufacturer or what we saw advertised. And then it's not really meeting the need that we expect it to meet for our need. But the phrase, he gave them power, can also be translated. He delegated his authority to them. In uh, management, it is uh, a lot easier on people that's under the manager or the supervisor, if he will just delegate them, and most of people know what their jobs are, responsibilities are, it's a lot easier for them to get their work done when they're delegated with the responsibility than having to a manager 
You ever had a supervisor that was a micromanager? Do you know what that is? Yes. I see if you had to go this way, and then I see a whole lot, a lot of looks that it's like, I don't even know what he's talking about. But a micromanager is someone that is standing over your shoulder, and every time you get, you're going to make a decision, he said, no, 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 that's not what you, you want to do it this way. And, they're, and then, then they're questioning everything you do do. Well, why did you do? You should have done. No. And it's like one of those times. Will you please leave me alone and let me do my job? I've been trained to do this job. And, and I certainly wouldn't want to do Trina's job. <laughs> there are some things about her job that... No thanks, but thank you anyway. I'm glad that she's been trained to do that. And, uh, but uh, now maybe Leah, if I, uh, her job probably wouldn't be much of a challenge in some areas, uh, but uh, so there's some things about her job that I could handle. Uh, computers, yeah, unless the computer went down or something had a glitch. But trying to do a, put a trach in a, that's not my cup of tea. Uh, or do a lot of those uh, respiratory uh, therapy. I don't think I'd enjoy that. But when you've been delegated and given a list, Jesus didn't breathe down and give these guys the, to the, the delegated authority just to stand over and make sure they did it right. There were times when he, when he called to them. He said, I'm going to give you power. I'm going to give you, the, I'm going to delegate to you a responsibility. And I'm going to give you the power to lose some things. To set the captive free. Bring deliverance. He called a set of 35 groups together. And he sent them out. And we don't see where he went with each one of those pairs. And just giving them instructions of everything they had to do. He said, just go out, come back with a report. And at the end of the day, because he loosed them to be at liberty to go, they came back and said, you know, demons! Woo, hallelujah! We had power over these demons today. They had to flee. Because he's given us oh, yes. delegated authority. Mm -hmm. We have power in the name of Jesus. We have power this morning just in the name. But just because we have the name doesn't mean that we always use the power and the delegated authority as, we sh as one should. But God help us today that we get into the place where it's and recognizing it's my time mm -hmm. for deliverance. It's my time for a blessing. It's my time right. to be loose. There are people today that they're not possessed of a devil or a demon or a spirit. But there are many people today that are oppressed within the church. We see that in the last two months, and we can go back over the last several years, that God has performed miracle after miracle in this place. In the last two months, there have been miracles that's happened. There's praise reports that's taken place right in this church. And yet there, my heart is burdened to see how many people that come to church needing a miracle or they're bound by a oppressive spirit. Now, Satan can't possess a born again child of God. He can oppress them. And there's a difference between oppression and possession. Possession is the indwelling of a spirit. 
Now, if you're not living for God and you're playing with God or you're toying with God, you, can't, you are in dangerous territory. But there are, are individuals who are living for God and they're constantly being oppressed by a spirit. There are some things this morning that as born again believers and individuals who are oppressed by spirit of defeatism, we are not a defeated person. There are times that we may lose one battle, but we did we haven't lost the war. There are times when you know, we just don't feel like we've got the strength to climb to the top of the spiritual Mount Everest. But when we get to a place where we don't even attempt to try because we're already defeated before we step out. I'm afraid I'm going to fall or I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to do it. I just, I, I know I can't. The, the spirit of I can't is a, is a spirit of defeat because we're not even going to try. There are people this morning that are, have a spirit of timidity. They're timid. They don't feel like they're you know, uh, as good as the next person. So they let you know, the spirit of timidness be in, uh, allow them not to achieve what God has called them to achieve. There are people are, that are bound by intimidation. We see that David was not intimidated by a giant. David, I don't know how tall he was. We, we don't know how old he was. Now, in Sunday school, they put him at between 10 and 12 years old. But we know that he was a, a little older than that. He was somewhere between 17 and 22 years of age. But even at that, he was not intimidated as a young man, as a, uh, they would have considered him a young boy. Uh, Goliath referred to him as a boy. You come to me with a slingshot and you, you think you're gonna do some damage? I have damage control going on here. Look at what I'm wearing, and look what I have, and look what I can do to you. But David was not intimidated. But there are individuals this morning that are oppressed because they are bound by intimidation. Some of us can be even bound by traditions. Well, that's not how we used to do it. That's not how it's done. Uh, you know, we've always done it this way. We, well, the hazards of, and it's not just in the church, in business. When you get a new owner come in, or even a new manager, a new supervisor, and all of a sudden they want to rearrange the furniture. What well, women I've always said here, I like my window seat. You mean I've got to go to the back of the room now? And there's not a window back there. What about my plants? I'm a plant person. I like my flowers, you know, decorating my desk. I'm sorry. This is a new organization of this room today. Or the church that gets a new pastor and, and he comes in and says, we have a new structure. But that's not the way Brother Jones did it. Or they come in, uh, Brother uh, Justin, they, they have these healing lines. Come on, Brother Jones. And the pastor before, he would lay hands on them, he'd spit in their face and he'd shake them to death. 
The new pastor comes in, he just lays the hands on him and, and prays him. And people say, well, well he, he must not be a man of God. Yeah, he, because that's not the way the other pastor did it. Well, this one. See, we get bound by certain things. Well, that's not the way Jesus did it either. When the uh, father brought his son, who was, had a spirit, he kept casting himself into the fire, just falling down and just, and the father took his boy to the disciples and they prayed and they made chanted or spit all over him and, and they could got the boy jumping him up and down and, and nothing happened. And finally in disgust, the father took his son, I'm going to Jesus. And Jesus just spoke a few words, cast out the spirit. And the father went away happy. And the disciples said, Jesus, why could we have done this? What is the difference? Jesus said some of these things ought to come by prayer and fasting. There's not a method, and there's sometimes there's not a rhyme or a reason to how Jesus did one thing and, and how other people can do other things. He had given them the power. He given them the uh, delegated authority to have power over oppression spirits. We can come against spiritual carnality that are bound by tradition. There are individuals who are highly driven emotions. They have no self-control. There are people that are bound this morning through fear and being a an, an very negative person. Well, it, it won't work. No, uh, no, it, we won't. We can't. We can't do it. It's been tried before, and we can't. You know, I, I hate negativity because it always stops progress. It's not just in the government, and it's not just in the neighborhood. It's not just in factories and businesses. It's in the church because a spirit that oppresses individuals. All it takes is one person who says, well, I don't like that. Who chose the color of the carpet? Who chose the color of the paint? Who chose? You have all these different committees not working together, and you come up with all kinds of weird stuff. You know, but God help us. This is our day because he has called us to have power over every unclean spirit, all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. We say that these effects most Every church, all these unclean spirits work against the flow and the operation of the Holy Ghost. We see that the devil doesn't care, and he will what happens on church on Sunday. You know, we could have a Holy Ghost move of God Sunday morning, Sunday night, and, and the devil doesn't care an ounce because he is working overtime Monday through Saturday. He, he doesn't care what goes on as long as he isn't evicted from the comforts of the mind. It, it's time for every unclean spirit to go. Can you imagine the kind of church we could have if the saved were to get free? Just like Brother Justin said this morning, Give it a hundred percent. Are we saved and bound or are we saved and been set free? 
You know, we must not deny the existence of unclean spirits in our churches. But it is time for the church to fast and pray like never before. It is time for the church to go on the offensive in the spiritual warfare. We're not fighting against flesh and blood, but we are fighting against a prince of the air, the prince of the paladies. It's affecting our homes. It's affecting our communities. We've got to fight against these things. It's a spiritual warfare. And the closer we get to the end time, the closer we are getting to a heated or more heated battle. Because the devil knows that his time is limited. And if he's going to work, he's going to work like never before. And do you know, if we could catch a vision of how close we are to end time, we would work as hard as he is working. We would give 40 hours a day if we had 40 hours in a day. You know, we, we wouldn't be satisfied with just me and my house. Because there are people that may be in our house that's not going to be ready either. But we're going to be determined that we're going to give every ounce of energy that we possess to make a difference for the kingdom of God. Because it is our time for the church that is bound to be set free. And if we want to see our cities set free, this is the day that the church needs to be loose. Oh, hallelujah. We need deliverance. And we have the power. We have the authority. We need to join ourselves together for the cause of Christ to see the church set free to be the people that Jesus intended for the church to be that's what I prayed this year as we push our way through 2013 God make me the church that I need to be Woo, hallelujah hallelujah I am praying I am believing for a great move of God for Revival like Creep Corps has never seen. Because it is our time. Oh, hallelujah. If you believe it, it's our time. Stand to your feet this morning and raise your hands. Give a shout unto the Lord like you've never given a shout before. If you truly believe this is our day of deliverance. Oh, hallelujah. There are things that we need to do and things that we need to move out from. Get out of our stinking thinking of, well, this is the way we've always done it. Jesus said, it's time to go into the highways and the byways. It's time to compel them. It's time to not just hang out a shingle and say, come, the doors are open. But to reach out to those. It's amazing this morning, as, we, as I close, that Jesus always extended a hand of fellowship. When I say fellowship, it was a hand of friendship before he ever began to witness about why he was there. Think about it. When he met the woman at the well, did he say, I've come to set you free of your adultery? I've come to set you free because of your lifestyle and you, 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 your past? No. He began to talk to her on a friend-to-friend -friend basis. Uh, 
do you mind getting me a cup of water? Oh, and, and while you're at it, I, I, you, you're going to give me something to drink, and I, I want to share something with you. Right. He didn't condemn her. He didn't start throwing stones at her, knowing her past. But he began to talk to her as a friend. Do you, have you ever wondered why she was there at noon to draw water for her cooking, for her washing, for her, uh, her clothes and her dishes? Because the women of the town always got there early in the morning. Why wasn't she there with the other women? You know, see, when Jesus told his disciples, I'm going to Samaria because I have a need. He knew that there was a woman going to be at the well at noon, and he wanted to minister to her need. God is going to place each one of us, if we are truly at that point where, God, I want you to use me. You're going to meet somebody at a well today, and you're going to minister to them. It's not about that thou, that thou shalt not. But it's about what I have, I'm going to give to you. It, we're going to take on the spirit of John and James, or Peter and John, who went to the temple at the hour of prayer, and they saw the lame man. He said, look on us. What, you going to give me some gold and silver? No, it's, it's your time for deliverance. It is your time. Look on us. Because what we have, we're going to give it to you right. in the name of Jesus. You, and they took hold of his hands Hallelujah. and helped him up. Hallelujah. And he began to leap and rejoice, praising God. It was his time. Hallelujah. It is our time. Hallelujah. 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 Let's lift our hands and let's the worship the Lord. This Great is your power, great is your strength, great are you, Lord, and great be to be praised. Great are your ways, great are your works, great are you, Lord, in all the earth. Great is your power, great is your, power. Great is your strength.